If you're a brand new WoW player or a DPS that just can't resist those juicy instant solo shuffle cues, deciding to start healing an arena can be a very intimidating decision. After being highly requested on all my previous videos, I'm here to give you the tools you need to begin tracking all the essential data in arenas by using add-ons. This is the first step to optimally trading cooldowns as well as outplaying your opponents as a healer. So today, I'm going to take you through the 10 must-have add-ons for healing in solo shuffle or arena. If you'd like to download all the add-ons before we begin, you can pause this screen here and do so. As you can see, I've broke the add-ons into two groups. The essential add-on group is the add-ons that will be used for tracking cooldowns, debuffs, and buffs. And the non-essential add-ons I primarily use for quality of life, customizing my UI like party frames, and gathering some extra data. Though I am calling them non-essential, I 100% would not play without them. Before we get into the add-ons though, there's just a few quick settings I'd like you to make in the default Blizzard interface. You can think of this as setting a strong foundation, because after you get the Blizzard settings right, all the add-ons will fall smoothly into place. So unfortunately, we have to start here. So the first thing is going to be changing our party frames. You go escape, edit mode, and then select your party frames. Make sure you've selected use raid style party frames. This will make it so you can see debuffs and buffs on your party frames in arena. Additionally, I suggest dragging the width and height to their maximum size to give the most room possible for important information to be displayed. Number two, Let's go to Escape, Options, and then Interface. Okay, now scroll down and select Display Class Colors and Show Debuffs. And make sure Display Only Dispellable Debuffs is not selected. Okay, I promise we're almost done with the default Blizzard UI, but in the Combat tab, I recommend unchecking the Personal Resource Display because you'll already be seeing your health and mana on your unit frame, as well as your health being displayed in your party frame, so it's more important to have this screen space freed up for something else. Also, under the Combat tab, make sure you have Loss of Control Effects selected as well. Okay, now that's going to be all for the default Blizzard interface, but if you think there's anything that I missed, please let us know down below in the comments. Let's start with the essential add-ons. You can open the add-on window with Escape, Options, and then selecting the add-ons tab at the top of the menu. The first add-on I'm going to talk about is Ability Team Tracker. This add-on allows you to track friendly cooldowns. You can pick and choose which ones are displayed and where. As a common theme throughout setting up these add-ons, you need to be careful because it's easy to track too many cooldowns, so much so that you get overwhelmed. So specifically with the Ability Team Tracker, I suggest starting with just the essential defensive cooldowns for each class. And then, as this add-on becomes more natural in your awareness, you can start adding in things like kick, CC, or maybe even offensive cooldowns. I personally still struggle with awareness, so I just have it set up to defensives so I can avoid overlapping cooldowns with my team. Setup of this add-on is really simple though. Just attach it to the Blizzard raid frames, and then adjust using the anchor offset X and anchor offset Y to get it to the perfect position. Also, I suggest using glow icons so when an ability is activated, it lights up and is easy to see. And that's another theme. The the easier it is to see things, the better, because there's a lot of information you're going to be tracking. Number two, big debuffs. Honestly, as far as I can remember, this add-on is just plug and play, so I haven't adjusted its settings at all. This add-on shows the most important debuffs on your friendly raid frames, shows the most important buffs and debuffs on your unit frame and targeting frame, and I also have it set to show offensive active buffs on enemy nameplates. There's a lot of customization you can do with all these add-ons though, so please feel free to experiment. Number three, since we keep talking about nameplates, I think we should talk about threat plates. This is personally my favorite nameplate add-on. It's visually simple and has a lot of customization that's pretty easy to use. Granted, nameplates are, again, subjective to your preference, so I'm just going to show you what works for me. To open threat plates slash TPTP, honestly, even just the baseline of this is pretty stinking good. And then show enemy units, players, and then this is the really important one, which is totems. You're definitely going to want to show that. Target-based transparency. Make sure nothing is check checked here. You don't want any of this stuff selected because it will make it so you're target nameplate is like a thick color and then the non-selected targets are like a lighter transparent color and it just makes it hard to see who's who and where they are. This is actually an important one. If you go to health bar view up here in the top for names, friendly name color by custom color, uh, you just go down here, select by custom color and then you can click it and you can choose. This is just for the name, not the health bar. You want the health bar to be the class color, but for the name, I find it actually is really helpful to have my friendlies blue and my enemy names orange. It just kind of helps you see a little bit better helps you tell a little better and you definitely want to make sure color by target mark is deselected that can be really confusing and then you're going to want to show debuffs on friendly this is actually something really helpful here enable arena widget if you go widgets arena show and health bar view and then show number. Showing the number, that's helpful. Helps you for targeting. Totem settings, you definitely want those to be shown. And then you can pick basically what totems you want to see and then what totems you don't want to see. And uh, yeah, so that's it. That's everything for this. Number four, Omnibar. This is a classic add-on that I feel like everyone knows about. This add-on allows you to track cooldowns and place them neatly on a bar of your choice. I personally use it to track enemy kicks, CC, and dispels. 
By keeping each of these categories on their own bar, it makes it easy to quickly glance over and see what they have on cooldown. You can also track offensive cooldowns with this, but instead, I use Weak Auras and Gladius X to do so. Number 5. Gladius X. This add-on's all about enemy arena frames. It shows you your enemy's CC DRs, it also shows their most important active buffs, are they currently under immunities, are they CC'd? You can also use it to track enemy cooldowns, you will also be able to see them casting, and it will track their trinkets. And the best part is, it puts all this info into one densely packed area, making it really easy to see what's going on with a quick glance. Number six. Finally, let's talk about weak auras. This add-on seems really confusing at first, but as you get more familiar with it, it gets easier to use, and its functionality and importance is undeniable. Allowing me to do things like track my most important bread and butter micro cooldowns and track active buffs that influence my character's playstyle, I think arguably the most important function of weak auras is actually very simple. All you have to do is import the Dragonflight Mez Arena CD's weak aura from the link down below in the description. Mez has set this up so that whenever the enemy uses a high value cooldown like Healing Tide Totem or Death Mark, text pops in the middle of your screen so you can immediately react as needed. So to import a weak aura, all you do is enter slash WA. You can go up here in the top left corner and click import, paste the import string. And as you can see, here it is, import as copy. I think for you, it wouldn't say copy. I think it would just say import, but I already have that weak aura. So I think that's why it said as a copy. And here you can see it's added it and it's it's all ready to go. That's literally all you need to do. Okay, so that covers it for our essential add-ons. Now let's go over my quality of life add-ons that I still find extremely important and wouldn't go without. But real quickly, if this video has been helpful for you, please let me know down below in the comments and consider liking and subscribing. It helps grow my channel and makes it possible for me to keep hustling on these videos. Thank you so much. Number seven, details. This is another plug and play add-on. It's ready to go straight out of the box. It allows to track the damage and healing meters from your rounds. This is good for acquiring data and if you use the death log feature, it can be a great way to see who's doing those ridiculously huge crits so you can properly complain about the right classes that need a nerf. I'm just kidding. Number eight, while we're talking about tracking our gameplay, I think it's worth mentioning Trufy GCD. This is the add-on that streamers commonly use to show what abilities they're using in real time. I think this add-on is even really important to people who never plan to stream their gameplay, strictly because I find it very useful when reviewing my own gameplay. So when I have a bad round that I recorded, I'll go back to watch it, and with this add-on, I can more easily analyze my gameplay by seeing how I'm using every global. Number nine, enhanced rate frames. This arguably could be on the list of essential add-ons because its functionality is so awesome, but maybe it's a bit of a niche pick depending on your class. The main feature I use this add-on for is it allows you to pick and choose specific buffs and debuffs and choose where they're displayed on your party frames. So for me as a Holy Paladin main, being able to see forbearance very easily is super important. So that way I know when I can bop or lay on hands again. So I've gone into the indicator options, selected middle center, and typed in forbearance. So now you can see forbearance is always going to be displayed in that same exact spot. I've also done a similar thing with my druid, so that way all my hots are displayed in their own location. I also use this add-on to further increase the scale of my raid frames beyond the standard blizzard functionality by increasing the raid frame scale. Number 10, the final add-on I use is sort group. This is the epitome of quality of life. Because I have my targeting macros set to mouse wheel up for party one, mouse wheel down for party two, and finally click the mouse wheel to target myself, I hate when I visually get set in the top of the party frames or in the middle, because it just feels counterintuitive for me. When I see myself at the top, I want to scroll up on my mouse wheel to select myself. Now this might not be a problem for some of you, but if it is, sort group is awesome. I personally set it to have me always on the bottom of my party frames. That way, I always know that the person on the top of the party frames is a mouse scroll up, and the person in the middle of the party frames is a mouse scroll down and myself is always just pressing the mouse wheel button down. Okay, well there you have it. Those are the 10 add-ons I believe any new healer needs in order to be proficient when starting out. Now actually getting them all set up is gonna take time and I'm sorry, but there's really no way around it. My first time setting up Omnibar and all the enemy cooldown tracking add-ons took me hours on hours. But it's a good exercise reading through all the abilities as you're setting it up to familiarize yourself with the enemy cooldowns. There's a ton of great guides out there on specific add-on setup. Because I'm covering such a wide range of them, there's just not time to go into depth for each. I will leave you with this bit of advice though for optimizing your add-on setup. Your goal should be to make the most out of the least. You could easily track every single cooldown in the game, but there will be so much data on your screen you'll have no idea what's happening. So my suggestion is to start with the friendly defensive abilities, enemy kicks and CC, along with the Mez weak aura so you know when big dam is coming, and finally just standard big debuffs, threat plates, and gladius x to make sure you're able to see all the stuff that's going on. When it comes to arranging your UI, try to set it up in a way that makes the most out of your peripheral vision. For example, with the way 
I currently have my UI set up, it keeps all the information in a nice centered area. So even when I'm honed in on one specific frame, I can still somewhat see everything else in my peripherals. It's taken me a lot of tuning to get my setup somewhere I'm comfortable with. So my biggest advice to you is to just queue for a bunch of arena skirms and keep tweaking your layout until it feels somewhat comfy. Even after tweaking and optimizing my setup for the last three months, I still find myself getting tunnel vision on my party frames and losing sight of all the other data I'm displaying. Being a healer requires you to be juggling a lot of balls at once, and as a result, it can be extremely frustrating when it feels like there's so much going on. But at the same time, when all the things click into place and you're outplaying your opponents, it feels insanely rewarding. So stay patient, stay dedicated, and don't give up. It only gets more fun the better you get. I stream live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash tro. Come say hey. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. I know how important your time is. So consider me honored. I'll see you next time. Like and subscribe, please. Please, please, like, 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 subscribe, share the video. Whoa, come on, man. Woo. Thank you. Seriously, thank you.